What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Steve and this is Tech Teardown. Today in this video I'm doing a little bit of an experiment that just kind of just piqued my interest. Something that I wondered in my head and I built this $450 gaming PC using the Ryzen 3 3200G which we all know that the APU is very dependent on its own system memory because it doesn't have dedicated VRAM built into the chip. So the original system that I built had the Team Group T-Force Delta RGB RAM cast latency 16 DDR4 3200 MHz speed. A lot of YouTubers have already tested raising the frequency and seeing how much performance there is, uh, but no one has actually tested latency that I could have seen anyway. So what I wanted to do is test a whole bunch of games and some uh, just synthetic benchmarks and see what type of performance increase we get on not only the CPU side, but on the graphics side when we get us a better latency. So I picked up this Corsair RGB RAM. Uh, this is their Vengeance RGB Pro. This is also 3200 megahertz speed, but it has a cast latency of 14. Before I get into the benchmarks, they do give you quite a, a significant boost in a lot of games, but not enough to really warrant the price. I paid over $200 for this memory kit. And at that point, I think it's better just to pick up a used graphics card in order to get the better performance in gaming. So in this video, I'm not going to recommend that you spend so much extra money on this RAM just to get that little boost in performance. I picked up that team group kit for about $75. It's an excellent kit that I really recommend for budget builders. You can pick up used graphics cards for $50, $75, which are going to give you a much better performance boost than picking up faster RAM. All I'm doing here in this video is just trying to see exactly how much of a performance boost you actually get with the faster latency. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. I am doing something a little bit different in this video. I usually uh, play some music and show the benchmarks. I'm going to show the benchmarks on the screen with the graphs, but I'm going to talk my way through them here. Let me know what you guys think of this style here. I would love to know your thoughts and opinions on how you like your benchmarks. Do you like me talking about them or do you want to just see them and have some nice music playing over it? So that's what we're going to do here today is I'm going to try something new. So let me know down in the comments what you think of this style. So we're going to start it off with the synthetic benchmarks. Also, when you're looking at these benchmarks, I was pretty methodical in a lot of these tests. I did, I did base a lot of these off of a three run average just because I was seeing a lot of just really big boosts in performance so i just i did want to test everything multiple times and just get on on average overall with these tests just let me know that i did test everything three times and everything is a three run average all right so starting off with fire strike with the cl16 team force rgb ram the overall score was 2709 the graphics score was 3,035, and the physics score, which is based off of your processor, was 8,939. Then when we look at the cast latency 14, the overall score was 3,289. So a very significant boost over the CL16 kit. So already seeing a great performance boost with the cast latency 14 in these tests. And then looking at the GPU score, our graphics score went up over 600 points to 3,661, and the physics score went up to 8,945. Next, we move on to 3D Mark Night Raid, which is another 3D Mark synthetic benchmark, which is used to test integrated graphics. We see here the CL16 RAM from Team Group. The overall score was 10,227. Our graphics score was 12,082, and we have our CPU score, which was 5,469. We move over to the cast latency 14, and we see a 2,000 point boost in the overall score to 12,306 over the cast latency 16's 10,227. And then for the graphics score, that went up about 3,000 points to 15,495 and the CPU went to 5,681, which is about a 200 point boost on the, on the processor. Looking at just a processing performance boost, we're going to switch over to Cinebench R15. The cast latency 16 got a score of 593, where the cast latency 14 had a score of 625. 
So that's it for the synthetic benchmarks. Now we're gonna switch it over to gaming and I'll have uh, some just little notes that I have to say about each game that I will want to take note of if there's something specific about the way I benchmark the game that I'll want to let you know. So starting off with Ashes of the Singularity, this is run at low settings, 1080p on DirectX 11, and this is the CPU benchmark. Ashes of the Singularity has two different benchmarks you can run, one that is mainly based on the processor and one that is based more on the graphics. Uh, for the CPU score, uh, cast latency 16, we had an average FPS of 22 compared to cast latency 14's 22.2. So we're not seeing much of a difference here. I did see that the 0.1% lows were very close. So Ashes of Singularity CPU benchmark, we didn't really see much of a performance boost with that. Now, moving on to the Ashes of the Singularity GPU benchmark, Cast Latency 16's average FPS had a score of 32.3 and a 1% low of 21.6 where the Cast Latency 14's average FPS was 33, they had a 23.3 1% low. So there was a little bit of a boost, not much for our graphics, a little bit better in 1% lows compared to the performance boost in average FPS. All right, moving on to Counter-Strike Global Offensive. This game is a, a great title to run on these APUs because they're not the most graphically intensive games. You can run them on low settings with great frame rates, but this is a more CPU intensive title. So you do see performance boosts with overclocking. One thing I did forget to mention is I do still have my overclock on this processor where I overclocked the CPU to 4.1 gigahertz and the graphics I overclocked to 1700 megahertz. Moving on to Counter-Strike Global Offensive at low settings on 1080p, we look at the Cast Latency 16 has 110.9 FPS and a 1% low of 70.4. Cast Latency 14, we get a 10 frame per second boost in performance where it goes up to 120.1 FPS and the 1% lows go up to 74.8. A pretty decent boost in performance with the Cast Latency 14, but as I said earlier, it is definitely gonna be something where I, I would recommend you spend the extra money on a actual graphics card rather than this RAM. All right, moving on to Fortnite. Something I do need to let you know about the way I tested Fortnite. Fortnite is such a very difficult game to benchmark, especially if you have to benchmark it inside an actual match. So what I did just to get the most comparable results is I went into the creative uh, part of Fortnite and created my own map and uh, built a, a bunch of structures. And I started off at one end of the map, destroyed a tree, and then ran from one end of the map to the other end of the map in the uh, straight line. That was the best way I could find to get comparable results in this benchmark. So looking at the scores here, we have Cast Latency 16. We have an average score of 85.2. And one thing to know again about the way I benchmark, you will not get this type of performance with this APU in an actual match of Fortnite. Uh, so please keep that in mind. These are not very comparable to what you'll see in actual game. If you do want to see what kind of performance you get with these APUs, you can check out my video where I built the system and I did test Fortnite. Uh, you can get over 60 FPS in an actual match. You'll not, you're not going to see 85 FPS on average with this APU. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're looking at these results. All right, so 85.2 was for Cast Latency 16. We moved down to Cast Latency 14. Average FPS went up to 94.6, almost a 10 frames per second boost and the 1% lows, we have 74.3 on cast latency 16, and CL14, we have 85.4. So definitely a much significant, a very significant boost in performance. Again, with Fortnite, cast latency 14 is an excellent, excellent 
speed for memory, especially Ryzen. All right, now moving on to Grand Theft Auto 5. This one also, I have to make a note on how I benchmarked it. I did use the built-in benchmark, uh, but I did not benchmark the entire benchmark. What I had done is tested the very end of the benchmark where they are uh, driving through the city and eventually crash into an oil tanker. This is the benchmark that I think is most re relative to how in-game performance is. Uh, so that is when I started to end the benchmark. So looking at GTA 5 on normal settings with 1080p, Castle Agency 16 had an average FPS of 54.4 and a 1% low of 37.3. Cast latency 14, we have a 63.7 average FPS, which is almost a 10 frames per second boost in performance on average. And then we have 1% uh, lows at 42.8, which is only about 5% difference in the CL16's 1% lows. All right, and moving on to Overwatch. This one also I did a benchmark differently. I went into the training session and I got to the shooting range where I'm shooting the like five different robots that are going back and forth into the screen. I benchmarked just that little part of Overwatch's training session. And from there, I got on the CL16, an average FPS of 59.9 with a 1% low of 54.3 and then with a almost 10, per, 10 frames per second boost here on the cast latency 14, we have an average frame rate of 68.6 with 1% lows at 59.4. So you can see here, it is almost like a 10 frames per second uh, boost in uh, graphics performance in a, a lot of these titles here. All right, and finally, our last game, we have Rainbow Six Siege on low settings at 1080p, 100% render scaling again. We have Cast Latency 16's average FPS of 44.9 compared to CL14's average FPS of 52. And the 1% lows, we see a 5 FPS boost where the CL16 had a score of 37.9 and CL14 had a score of 43.8. All right, guys, so as you can see, Cast Latency 14, the Corsair RAM, definitely provided a significant boost in performance, but not significant enough for me to tell you that you should be paying $200 on RAM. That's more than, this RAM was more than double the price of the Ryzen 3200G itself, and I really don't recommend that you spend double the price you spent on your processor on RAM. Your money is gonna be better spent on a cheap graphics card that you can buy on eBay, like an RX 570, RX 560, GTX 1060, things like that are definitely gonna be providing you a, a much bigger performance boost than this memory. And you saw that it didn't provide that much of a boost in processor performance for you to even warrant that purchase for that type of boost. That being said, the Ryzen 3 3200G is one of my favorite processors here for the budget-friendly gamer. For only $100, this is a great processor. It comes with its own cooler, so you spend save money that way. AMD is just killing it right now for budget gamers, and the 3200G is a great way to start if you're getting into gaming. Moving back to our test here, this was just a fun experiment for out of my curiosity just to see how much performance boost graphically we can get with the CL14 RAM. If you like this type of experiment, let me know down in the comments if you have anything that you were curious about that you want me to test. I love to hear your ideas. If you liked the video, please give it a like. If you didn't like it, let me know down in the comments what you didn't like about it. If you're near here, please subscribe and hit that bell so YouTube will notify you when I've uploaded my next video. Thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate giving me your time uh, out of your day to watch my videos and listen to me talk about these things that I'm very passionate about. So I think that's going to wrap up this video guys. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video.